Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm doing a new intro for a new collab project pan. So I have been lucky enough to become friends through Instagram with such an amazing project panner. Her name is Liz, and her Instagram is Liz Plans and Pans. And we first started talking over like our Natasha Denona palettes and like our love for kind of some high-end products that eventually like we felt a bit too scared or a bit too hesitant to use and Liz came up with this amazing idea for a project pan where we focus on those most expensive products or those most luxe products in our collection and she asked me to do this with her and I was already like 100% on board. I was like, this is an amazing idea. I have some luxe products that I, I am still, either they're sitting in my collection or I'm too afraid to use them. So this is going to be a little bit of a longer project. It's basically gonna be most of the winter and we are calling this the Lust for Lux project pan. We picked six products that we're hoping to make some sort of progress on in six months. So this project will begin on September 1st and it will go all the way until March 1st. I have my six luxe products in here. We really wanted to focus more on like higher end luxury, a bit more pricey products. So I have six products in here and I have different goals for each one. So I'll talk about that when I introduce each project. But Liz is going to be doing this project with me, of course, and I want to go ahead and invite anyone else who may be watching this, if you have an Instagram, if you have a YouTube channel, if you want to do this project with us, please do so. That would be amazing. So we stuck to just the six products for six months because we thought that would be a little bit more reasonable given our other projects and what we're working on. And also the time of year because this is going to go through like the holidays and New Year's and whatnot. So I thought that would be the best way for this to be formatted. So let's go ahead and jump into the six products that I picked out. Okay, so the first product is an eyeshadow palette because of course I felt like I needed to pick one of my more high-end luxury eyeshadow palettes. So I picked my one Pat McGrath palette. This is the Pat McGrath Labs Mothership Sublime Bronze Temptation palette. I have barely used this palette since I purchased this and I was so excited to get this because of all the hype around Pat McGrath and all of like everyone saying that these shadows were amazing and that they were incredible. I yeah, I'm glad I picked this one up. This is one of the cheaper palettes. This is around 50 something dollars for six shades and I need to get some use out of this. I barely reach for it. But that being said, these shades are very holiday. This was a holiday palette. So of course, this looks very Christmassy. This looks very Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving-y. I don't know if that's a word. This is a very fall themed, Christmas, winter themed palette. So I honestly think this one palette out of my Luxe palettes would be the best for me to get the use that I need out of it by the end of this project. So my goal for this palette, I want to hit pan in at least three of these shades. I want to hit pan in at least half of the shades in here. I think that's a reasonable goal for me, especially since I do have another pan that palette that I will be doing for half of this project and then I will be starting another actual pan that palette in January. So I think this is reasonable. I want to hit just pan. I want to see pan in at least three of these shades before the end of this project. I am wearing this palette on my eyes today and I have to say the two matte shades do blend out gorgeously. It takes no time at all. The shimmers are beautiful, but I do think that for my skin tone, the green and the red are a bit dark for me to use just on an everyday basis. If I'm going out or if I'm doing a deep smoky eye, oh, they're gorgeous. But for something I'm hoping to pan, I'm looking for something I can wear like to work on an everyday basis. This is basically the only work look I can get out of this palette. So I use the two matte shades, the light brown and the deep brown burgundy shade as my transition slash uh, deepening the outer corner shade. I then used this deeper kind of champagne shade all over my lid and then my inner corner highlight is this shade right here. So that is my first goal in the project and my first product. My next product is a bit of a give me product because I've already hit pan on this so my goal is to finish this product. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Ethereal Light. And you can see I've already hit significant pan on this. I don't know what my skin tone is doing. I haven't gone outside or like tanned a lot, like at all. 
So I've actually been getting paler and I've noticed my foundation shades are really dark on me. My concealer shades that used to really match me don't really match me anymore. And this used to be pretty light on me, but uh, I think right now this is a good shade. <laughs> So since I've already hit pan on this, I threw it back in my collection intending to bring it back out in like the deep of winter when I was pale again. But I honestly, I think I can use this now because guess what? I did not tan this summer. I stayed inside and I worked. So I really want to finish this one up. And since I've already made so much progress, I honestly think this shouldn't be an issue for me to use up by March 1st. And I also want to say I think it's really cute that Liz and I both picked out two of basically the same product for this project. One being an hourglass powder. She also picked out an hourglass powder and she also picked out this next highlighter but in a different shade. So this is the Dior Nude Skin Nude Luminizer and I got the shade 01 Nude or as my boyfriend likes to say, Dua. What did you call that one? A dua. A dua. A dua. Okay. It's Dior, but okay. <laughs> that cracked me up. Now, whenever I look at this, I just think of dua. But this is so great because Liz actually picked this up in shade two, I think it is. It's like the more pinky shade. I picked this up because I was in Sephora and I was swatching and I literally swatched this and I gasped in store. It's gorgeous. I'm wearing this today. It is the perfect just tone for my skin tone and it blends like this doesn't look like a harsh highlight this is just blended and it's pretty I'm wearing it on my cupid's bow i'm wearing it on my nose i i love this highlight but i've been afraid to use it like i still have like the little pouch it comes in because it's it's a pricey dior highlighter right i want to use this I've been focusing, so the the nude word is actually imprinted in here. I've been focusing on the DE bottom portion. So what I want to do by the end of this project is actually hit pan in that bottom portion of this product. Because I think I can, because I love this highlight. It's a gorgeous highlight. I can wear this to work. I can build this up if I want a crazy intense highlight. So yeah, I definitely want to use that bottom portion. I want to hit pan on it. And I'm just so happy that Liz and I happen to pick like some of the same products because I think that's fun. All right, so the next product is an eyeliner from Marc Jacobs, and I don't see the exact name on here. It might just be called the eyeliner, but this is the eyeliner in one of their lightest shades. It's like a light, like, uh, champagne shimmer shade, and I am wearing it, like, in my waterline today. It isn't really noticeable. I picked this up because I was hopefully looking for something in the Marc Jacobs line that was brightening and would help me look not as dead as I am in the mornings. So I got this and like, I think it's pretty. I think it's honestly, it would probably be more pretty if I used it like on my actual lid and did some more artistic work with it more so than in my waterline. Cause in my waterline, it's not really noticeable unless you see like the light shift. So that's what I wanna do with this product. I wanna experiment more with this. And as it is an eyeliner, I haven't used it honestly more than a couple of times. So throughout the progress of this project, I do want to continuously use it. Um, and as it is a twist up liner, I do like the fact that I could just kind of like chop off if I need to. Um, for the most part, I would only use eyeliners or eyeliners for like three months and then get rid of them. But with this, I feel like I could twist out like the next portion and just chop off what I used so I can use it for the full six months. So that's my goal. I wanna use this for six months and if I need to, I will chop off what I've already used to get some new product down there and just get good use out of this for six months because I've had this in my collection. Like I said, I used it a couple of times and then never touched it again because I was afraid of using a full size Marc Jacobs eyeliner, which I shouldn't be because I got it and it's actually kind of pretty and I need to experiment more with it because all I've done is throw it in my waterline. I need to do more with it. All right, so my next product is also another liner, and this is a, a good old Natasha product. This is the Natasha Denona Blackest Black Star Liner. So if you actually pull the top off, this is two separate eyeliners. One is a matte black liner, and the other one is like a glittery taco. <laughs> I'm gonna call it a taco because that's what I'm thinking, but the one thing that actually kind of annoys me with this product is the brush. I really don't think it has a good eyeliner brush on it. Uh, but I've only used this a couple of times, like I said, because it's expensive and because I wanted to test it out. But as it is an eyeliner, 
Again, I want to use this for the length of the project and then eventually declutter it because of the way that it is. But I do like the idea behind this because the whole idea is that these are labeled step one and step two. What you're supposed to do is do like a black winged liner or a black liner and then let that dry or I don't know if you can go into this wet. And then you go in with the glittery step and you make it a glitter liner. So honestly, I love the idea behind this. I love black glitter. Uh, I've been wearing black glitter hollow nail polish for the past few months. <laughs> I, I just love the idea behind this. And I think as we're getting into like October, into the holidays, that's where this will shine. And so I really want to get my use out of this product and move it out of my collection. All right, and here we are. We have our final product, and I am wearing this on my lips today. This is from YSL, and this is one of their lip stains in the shade number seven. So I honestly, I have three of these, and I love this. Like, I, I hate how expensive it was, but I love this formula, and I love this... Ah. I picked out shade seven. This is the darkest shade that I have in this formula because again we're getting into fall we're getting into the holidays and i think this is a perfect everyday nude in like the fall for like a deeper i don't know what i'm trying to say uh, that's what i'm trying to say because i think this is a perfect everyday nude shade for the fall it's a little bit deeper than like i'm used to for a nude but i went for a lighter nude for the summer so i think i want to go back to like a deeper nude i can wear this every day to work i can wear this to anywhere honestly and because it's a lip stain it doesn't transfer. It feels really comfortable. I don't even feel anything on my lips right now. It's kiss proof. Tested that. <laughs> uh, but honestly, this is just such a great product. And I don't reach for these because these were pretty pricey and they were from YSL. So I'm going to use this. Uh, my goal is just to use this as many times as I can by the end of the project. I don't know when to know when this is empty. I think it's just when it dries out. Since it is a lip stain, it is a bit different than your typical lip product. You get just a little bit of product on here. And honestly, a little goes a long way with this as it is more of a stain than it is like a lipstick or a, yeah, as it is more like a lipstick. This is gonna be my go-to nude from now on. And I just, I just wanna use this continuously and we'll see how this product is at the end of the project. Cause I don't know if this is gonna like dry out or not. So those are all the products in my Lust for Lux project pan collab. Please, if you haven't already, go check out Liz on Instagram and follow her there. I will be doing my main updates here on YouTube. I'm thinking about like once a month or so to just show my progress. I'm also trying to be more like current and active on my Instagram page. I will be doing a little bit of updates here and there, but my main updates will stay here on YouTube. Again, please let me know down below if anyone of you want to do this project with us I would love to have you with us and just work on our Lux projects and if you do videos or if you're on Instagram just let us know since this project is split I would love to see just a, a collaboration of other people doing this and I can definitely list everyone doing the project down below in my next update thank you guys so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video bye